So if you were sitting next to somebody on a bus and you just had one thing that you could tell them that if they were persistent, no matter who they are, that they would find this happiness that we're trying to transmit in these videos, what would it be? Well, I, I think the easiest, quickest way in we've been discovering, like you have too, is when am I? It's very powerful. Uh, much more so even than where am I? My experience of much more than who am I, which can be very equivocal. And so if you're looking for self-inquiry questions, the thing about when am I, is you think, that's a ridiculous question. Just such a stupid question. Why would even bother with it? And you begin to ask and you think, oh, you begin to see that, in fact, you aren't there all the time. This is a big revelation, because we believe that, in fact, we are something that goes through time and we're always the same thing. And if we watch and we say, well, it's a different person shows up each time a different relationship manifests. So to me, when am I would be something, if I could give somebody, say, okay, everybody should just work on when am I and just see what comes out of it. Because you will, if you keep following it, find out that, in fact, you're not a constant entity and you're not the same entity all the time. And that begins to really eat at the core of our belief set that in fact the I is you know, a thing, continuous through time, has its own memories. But in fact, you see, it's just an ad hoc entity that comes on scene as it's useful or not useful. And in fact, this is what drives us crazy about other people, is that we project a continuous self in them mm -hmm. and they have the nerve to present to us this ad hoc, fragmented, inconsistent, sometimes they're like this, sometimes they're like that sort of entity. And, you know, who are they really? Who are they really? I thought she'd be like you know, this when I said that, and she was like that. You know, I'm over here being myself. Yeah. That's, just, that's just how I am. Perfect. <laughs> I'm always the same self. But now she's come this way, she's come off as completely half-cocked, what is she doing? You know, sometimes she likes it like this, right. and well, sometimes she doesn't want to go there. What's wrong with her or him? Yeah, well, maybe maybe another person would yeah. solve that. You, you know, so it would be the same thing all the time. No, but, but so, but then if we ask this question, so when am I? Which I think you're right. It just has more teeth in it mm -hmm. than who am I? I feel like the ego like has answers to that mm -hmm. one. It's also very useful. But if we say well, when am I exactly? We just start to observe, but it's almost as if in order to carry out that observation, we have to already be observing at all. So do you, do you see this as a good transition, say, from somebody who maybe has been practicing mindfulness for a little while and they're able to focus their attention and, and watch their flow of thoughts? Mm -hmm. uh, or is it you think there's something you can just go in and start doing uh, Right away. Well, I think in the former case, it's an excellent first or transitional question to ask yourself inquiry because people have done the mindfulness for a long time. I see all these folks who have learned how to focus. They can concentrate. They can, you know, get their mind to a place where they can step back, uh, detach. I'm dreaming of a Lamborghini again. I'm dreaming of a Lamborghini again. Detach from the Lamborghinis out there. I'm back here. They can see themselves doing that. Then their minds calm down enough that they can entertain a question. And this is one that, in my experience, is often paradoxical and, and crazy enough. People say, well, I uh, begin to look at it. Because it, it's intriguing at the same time that it's really paradoxical. And so if the person's an intellectual, it'll be appeal to the intellectual side of them. And in fact, this is a strange question. I'm going to try to work on this. Thing. Almost nobody says, no, I don't want to do that. So it, it seems to engage them. If you can walk up to a person on the street and say, when are you? I think they would probably turn around and walk away. But I don't think you're going to get those people on a one-time sitting next to on the bus. Yeah. I think you can get them other ways, but for a question on somebody who's not quite um, totally could be towards the end yet, but at least has worked some, done some work. But I think when am I is very useful. The person you just meet on the bus, hmm. I mean, you're sitting next to her for or him for a reason. Yeah, yeah you have right. I mean, they're there and they have a question. It's like, oh, really? You know, what is that? What is it, Vita? Uh, you know, I've heard of mindfulness, but well, what is this non-dual stuff? It's a complete. It's a completely, per, you know, person with none of that background. Yeah. I mean, I say things like, if you could get into a conversation, you say, well, are you happy? Yeah. And are you suffering? Yeah. And almost everybody say, yes. I'm. I just tell you about myself. 
Yeah. Now they will have suffering in them. So it's a long bus ride is what you're saying. It's a long bus ride. It's a long bus ride. <laughs> and so these things tell you a story about why they're suffering. You can begin to say, well, look, you, you, know, you can get rid of that story in your head. I do this with people. That story in your head that keeps repeating over and over again. There are ways you can look at that story. And you can begin to look and see if it's a real true story or not. Or if it's just, you know, fantastic. And you find out if you look carefully at the story. And your ways we have to convolute it. We've talked about that many times before with Barb and Katie and Sedona method. To deconvolute that story, you can, you can begin to open up the box. And in fact, if one story is false, then maybe all of the stories are false. And the story of I, the attachment I have to the I, that can be let go of. But I think you've got to somehow work people into, okay, they are unhappy, or most people are very unhappy. Most people are very stressed out. And they all have some bad memories. And you can begin to get into them and say, look, you, you can get rid of it. You can go beyond this narrative that makes you feel unhappy all the time. You can get beyond these stories. You can be in a place where you aren't bothered by those things. They're not going to go to your head and be totally, totally happy, but you can get those problems out of your life. So in other words, if you're sitting next to the person and it's a really short bus ride, mm -hmm. you just say, it's possible to be happy. Yes. Yes, I did that today on Facebook. Uh, basically said it is possible to be happy and just that look you can do this thing and it, it you can do self-referential blah blah we tell, tell, tell people you can stop that and this, they haven't in fact, until that very moment probably ever in their life heard that it was possible to stop that endless voice in their head and almost everybody is curious about it they might say no it's, no, it's, not, it's not possible but some people will be intrigued and say really you can stop that there's one reporter in Hong Kong's one. I said, yeah, you can stop that. She said, how do you do that? Just curiosity. I didn't know you could stop that. Yes, you can stop that. But it's kind of interesting that it generates, as we've discussed before, such incredulity. Yeah, oh, and hostility. All the yeah. way to do it. It's impossible. You're deluding yourself. Uh, one, and then the other one comes back and goes, no, you couldn't be speaking if you weren't thinking. We've had a video on that, which is, you don't think up what you say, you don't think up what you say. And so if you look at that research, the research we've done, you can find the fact that it isn't true. Right. You don't need to think to speak. You can't get it. In fact, you don't. You well, can. what's interesting, those same people, though, could go to a Mexican restaurant, say a Tex-Mex restaurant, mm -hmm. and they'd see that there was fried ice cream mm -hmm. on the menu. Yeah. And they would say, that's not possible. Fry you can't do that. Fry ice cream. They would order it they out of curiosity. Right. So, like, it, it so, I mean, it's funny that something that is so close to us, mm -hmm. you know, it's a matter of saying, you know, you can stop hitting yourself in the face over and over again. Yeah. You really can. Uh, that it, we, we greet it with such incredulity, perhaps because we identify with it. We think that it is us. Mm -hmm. And so we think we're stuck with it for life. You know, there's no opting out of it. Well, there is strong institutional support to make us believe that, in fact, you can't stop that internal narrative. But you need that. And all these other things, you need that better car, that different partner, that bigger house, that bigger job. That's institutionally supported. Right. Nobody's against frozen ice cream, but, you know. <laughs> Fro uh, uh, fried ice cream. Fried ice cream. Yeah. Nobody's, yeah. Against, nobody's against fried ice cream. It's, I mean, it's curious. Well, it's an abomination. I'm yeah, sure. I'm it's sure. An abomination. There's probably a group somewhere that is organized against yeah. it, actually. But, but just, there's nobody really <laughs> hostile to it. It's just curious. Yeah. yeah. And there are people who are actively hostile to the idea that you can stop this internal narrative. And you can stop your. Is that because they might have to? Because the, they, their egoic structure is so afraid of the possibility of losing its primacy in this whole thing. If this has to, no, we can't even consider that because it, it knows it's how, death itself. how fragile its hold is. It realizes it is not living up to the task. It's not doing a very good job of running things. But it's kind of a shh. Don't pay no attention to the man behind the screen. Don't ask any questions about this thing. We're just believing this right now. It is fried ice cream. Just be quiet. Right. Or, you know, you don't understand. I have a specially traumatic <laughs> yeah. background oh. Oh. that really prevents my right. ability to silence that internal thought. Right. Uh, I'm sure yours was just incredibly easy. Right. And the reason why you were able to silence your... You were just lucky, That's right. basically. Well, and I tell people, I said, well, let me tell you, you know, your story... You tell me the truth. I'll tell you, there's somebody who I work with, some people I've worked with, who had such horrific lives. I mean, just unbelievably horrific lives. I'm astonished they're alive. 
And so, you, whatever your story is, it's nothing compared to this person's story. So, they're doing it. How come you can't do it? Oh, well, I've had this problem with my brother. It's like, whatever. I mean, it's nothing compared to what these people have been through. Horrific, horrific lives. And they're doing this work. So you can do it. Really, you can do this stuff. And they're happy to be alive. And they're happy to be alive. 